In this video I'm going to show you how to do the first packet tracer uh, skills assignment that we have. This is in week four, it's under chapter two. Um, it's under the PT assignment along the left hand side here. Um, for a lot of the packet tracer assignments there's an instruction sheet and then the actual file. Um, you don't necessarily even need to open this instruction sheet. I thought it might just be easier for some people to read through the instructions. I do not need this submitted. Um, so it's up to you whether or not you want to download that. But we definitely do need uh, the Packet Tracer file, and you will need Packet Tracer installed for this. Um, Packet Tracer you can find in the Practice Lab. You can find it on the Cisco Netacad uh, website as well. Uh, the latest version as of this recording is version uh, 6.2, I believe. So I'm going to go ahead and click on it and download it and open it up. Uh, now when you open up Packet Tracer, uh, there are typically always going to be there are typically always going to be two windows that open. And depending on how you have your tabs, these tabs could be on top of each other. Uh, one tab is your actual packet tracer uh, topology that you can work with. And the other tab is your instruction sheet. So your instruction sheet will typically give you all the information that you need. IP addresses, names, um, passwords, the different things that you're going to have to do. Um, so what I'm going to do is just configure this first switch. Uh, you guys can configure your second one. Now keep in mind that most of the packet chasers will automatically generate these values. So your passwords, your names, your IP addresses could potentially be different than what I am doing. So the first thing I need to do is configure room 145. So uh, to do a lot of the configurations in Packet Tracer, you simply just click on the device and then go to the CLI tab. Every now and then you may get a, a message about the configuration being locked by clicking on the device and trying to go to the CLI. In that scenario, what they need you to do is to um, use a console connection. You can see a message I'm getting here is I can't add any links. But with the console connection, what you would do is you'd grab that console cable, you'd go from the PC's RS-232 to the switch's console port. That's what you'd have to do on an actual switch with a PC, is you'd go from the COM port of the PC to the console port on the switch. Then what you would do is you would click on the PC, go to the desktop tab, choose terminal, hit OK, and then that would connect you to the command prompt of the switch. You can see now I'm not getting any output because I do not have that cable um, selected. But again, typically what you should have to do is just click on the device you want to configure. Under the CLI tab, you can open it up here. Um, and you can see here I'm in user exec mode. I want to get into enable or privilege mode and then get, get into config T mode. Again, config T is short for configure terminal. If these commands are not looking familiar to you, I would highly recommend going through some of the videos that I have posted and reading through the curriculum. So the first thing I want to do is give this a host name. So I type host name, and this one is room-145. Now uh, for the names and the passwords, this is case sensitive. Uh, if you don't put the correct case in there, you will get it incorrect. Um, you can see here in Packet Tracer on your instruction window, you have this completion percentage. So right now I'm one out of 90. So after you type something in as a command, it should go up. So the next thing I'm going to do is the password for the lines. So I have my line console zero, and that has a password in my case of eight U B capital R U. Now again, yours could be different. And you can see how my completion went from one to two. And I need that keyword login because I want this password um, to be prompted for when someone attempts to log in. Now notice I didn't get a point for typing that keyword login, but that's because that is something that's not being checked for. But it, it is required, you do want to put it in there. One other thing you can do on the instructions page is you can click check results and then under the uh, check results there's this assessment items and these are all the different things that it's looking for to give you points and as you do something you get a green check and if you're missing something you have the red X 
So if you can't quite get all your points, click that, um, that button to check results, click assessment items, and you can see exactly what you're missing. You need to close this back out to pull back up the windows. Okay, so I'm back on my room 145 switch. Um, I'm working on the line passwords. My other line is line VTY0 through 4. This is for Telnet passwords. And for this, the password is the same thing. So I'm actually just going to hit my up arrow a few times. And I can repeat the previous commands. And I want that keyword log in here again. I'm going to exit out. And then I have my secret password to do. So that's the enable secret. And that password in my case is capital C, 9, W, lowercase r, uppercase e. And then I want to encrypt all these um, passwords. That is the service password dash encryption. Next thing it wants me to do is to include the word warning in a banner. So I'm going to do the banner, MOTD, some special character. Same special character because whatever's in between the two special characters is your message. And uh, then it wants us to configure an IP address according to the addressing table. And if I look at the addressing table here, um, I'm on room, room 145, the interface is VLAN 1, the IP address is 128.107.20.10.2255.0 for the subnet mask. So what I do here is I get into that interface, VLAN 1, I give it the IP address of 128.107.20.10.2255.0. Triple two five five dot zero. This is all one line. It's just kind of carrying over. You can see that's all one line there. And then to turn on this interface, I do the no shut or the no shutdown. Again, remember with Cisco iOS, you can pretty much shorten any command out there. Uh, you get your change state to up, and I should have everything except for saving my configuration. So to save your configuration, that's actually out in privilege mode with a copy run start. And what I'm going to do is verify I have everything on the first switch configured that it wanted. So I'm on room 145 switch, got banner, console password, secret, host name. I did the VLAN 1 with the IP address, subnet mask, and I turned it on. I enabled the service password encryption. I saved my configuration with the copy run start and I did my line VTY04 password. So right now I don't have my manager or reception PC configured or my room 146 PC or my room 146 switch configured. So I will just configure one of the PCs to show you how that's done. I'll do the manager. I can see the IP address. So that fairly um, straightforward. You just click on the manager PC, go to the IP configuration. This is under the desktop tab type in the IP address according to the table 128.107.20.25 in my case subnet mask is triple two five five zero uh, no default gateway or DNS server so I can close that now check my progress I'm at 45 out of 90 so I have half done the uh, upper switch and upper PC are fully configured I will leave the rest to you, but you should be able to essentially um, do exactly what you did for the other PC and switch to continue this. Um, as I said, if you are struggling with what commands to enter and how these work, I know I went through this fairly quickly in this video, I would highly recommend watching the previous videos I have posted um, under the chapter and to read through the curriculum. Hope this helps get, get you started. If you have further questions, please let me know.